Alrighty then. <laughs> What's going on, guys? So today I'm gonna to be talking about. Wait, I'm gonna wait for this car to pass by. All right. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my transition out of the military into the civilian world. Um, as you may or may not know, I was in the Air Force for the last six years, uh, and I just well, technically I'll be out next month, but for the last five and a half months I've been on the SkillBridge program, and it's pretty much been you know my acclimation into the civilian world and I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal I thought you know I worked in finance when I was in the Air Force I'm technically still in the Air Force I'm on terminal leave right now but I worked in finance you know it was a you know very similar to a you know eight to five nine to five job you know um, especially with the last base that I was at the last um, duty station it really felt like a normal job um, I'd say uh, at least that's what I thought in reality not so much because you don't really notice the uh, programming that your brain had gone through um, when you're in the military right especially when you're deep into it the first few years um, but then after about I don't know maybe a month or two after you either separate or if you go on the skill bridge program like I was on um, you and then you start dealing with other people and you start maybe doing an internship and you work at a different job or something like that where you're in a different environment on a day-to-day -day basis then you start realizing oh wow it is really different and uh, I'm going to kind of hit on a few things that I noticed uh, big time <laughs> when I trend when I began doing the skill bridge program and what I notice now and what it's kind of it's kind of been uh, what's kind of been a challenge for me um, the first thing right when I began the skill bridge program you know uh, preparation right preparation for uh, the the internship and and what was planned ahead um, the in the military everything's pretty much planned right uh, <laughs> obviously there's there's a lot of times where things deviate and things don't necessarily go as planned and um, but usually there's a there's a structure right there's something that you do you know uh, your your day-to-day -day for the most part is pretty much the same the problems that arise that's different but your your daily your weekly monthly structure is pretty similar um, unless you're in some uh, unique position or unique job where it's not but in, the, in my case it was um, but when I began this internship when I began the skill bridge program um, the first thing I noticed was how different um, how different everything was from the military life um, a prime example the internship that I began at the job that I began at um, the uh, dealing with coworkers, dealing with people that you work with, totally different. Um, uh, I the, when I started at this job, you know, I wanted to be uh, prepared. I wanted to be, you know, tight and sharp. Even you know, from my feet up, um, I wanted to, you know, I I came into work wearing a button-down shirt, long sleeve. Um, you know, my slacks were were more slacks <laughs> but they were um, you know ironed you know my shoes looked good everything you know my belt all that stuff right I didn't wear earrings I'm not wearing earrings right now but I started wearing earrings recently but I didn't wear earrings to work you know things like that which I thought was kind of like common place kind of common practice um, especially because I was doing a finance internship um, something as what seems small, um, um, and in actuality is pretty small, um, stood out to me the most because when I got there, everybody was casual, you know, and it turns out, like, when I mean casual, I mean everybody's wearing casual clothes, I mean hoodies, jeans, um, you know, dyed hair, you know, people had their hair dyed. Um, it, it was definitely different, um, and I was just like, am I doing too much? I don't know um, and um, that took some adjusting and it turns out that a lot of 
places do that. At least maybe that's just in California, maybe here. Um, I don't know if that's like, you know, maybe if, if I were to do finance some other place in the country, maybe it would have been, I would have, um, that wouldn't have stood out to me. Um, but here it definitely did. And um, another one is communication. Communication with people is, is a little different. Um, so if you're familiar in the military, you, you move to a new base and perhaps you know you have a sponsor and your sponsor introduces you to a bunch of people and you go around the, the, the unit, you go around the squad or whatever and you start uh, meeting you know whoever the leaders are, who the commander is, um, and you have this kind of, uh, I don't want to say cookie cutter, but it's a staple presentation or introduction to all these people every time you move to a new base, right? It's kind of similar every time you move your PCS to a new um, uh, duty station. And it's pretty formal, right? You're at parade rest or whatever, and you kind of have this formal introduction to this person. And it's very much, hello, sir, hello, ma hello ma'am. Um, oh, I'm, it's nice to be here. Um, I can't wait to get started. I'm really looking forward to work. Right, you have this whole thing, this whole introduction. Um, and for me at this, at this job, it was like very much, <laughs> I don't have the words to put it, but it was very much not that, right? It was kind of just, hey man, what's going on? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm good, yep, all right. <laughs> um, and um, granted, I did have a unique situation in the first place with my internship, and I'll get into that later, hopefully in another video, but it was very much the opposite. And I, I think for me, it was, some might say it was kind of being uptight. It was kind of being, you know, a, a little too uh, sharp edged, I guess. Um, and perhaps I need to pull back and be a little bit more laid back. But, you know, that's not where I came from, right? And so my, my brain was a little wired differently and it still kind of is and I'm still battling it. I'm trying by, you know, doing things like growing my hair out, you know, be more casual when I do things. Um, and um, perhaps I'm trying to do that while also keeping my, you know, military, I guess, work ethic and um, structure, you know, having a steady schedule, all those things. I'm trying to keep that while also trying to acclimate into how people do it here um, in the workplace. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a struggle finding that balance, right? Because I, given uh, I have, you know, I'm on terminal leave right now, so I'm not really doing anything. You know, I go back to school at the end of the month, um, next month. Um, and I'm currently in transition to a new job. But as of right now, I'm not really doing anything. And so um, I'm trying to find the balance of being able to keep what I've learned and kind of programmed myself in the military while also acclimating it and adjusting it to whatever it is I need to do here in the civilian world. And it's a weird balance that I think we all try to figure out and we're all trying to learn and, and as we're transitioning out of the military. And um, so the, without <laughs> deviating too much, the dealing with people, meeting people, I mean, the first day I remember meeting a few people, I won't mention names, but you know, even meeting like the boss of, of the company, right? You know, I'm so used to saying, hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. How are you doing? Calling them sir, ma'am. Um, <laughs> you know, being very, I don't want to say like, it's almost like it's, it's being respectful, right? Not kissing butt, but you're just being really there's respectful and then there's being respectful in the sense of like how you talk to your leadership or your boss right <laughs> and so um if you get what i mean in the military right and so that's kind of what i was doing and he was just like no you just call me you know so and so right his name and for me i was just like man i gotta it's i'm not used to that you know um and so being able to adjust to not you know saying rank or saying their last name or sir and and calling them by their first name that might seem something small for somebody in the civilian world for, but for me it was a you know it literally I didn't realize how big of a change that had to be for me but it was and so that took a while to adjust to 
another thing for me was, <laughs> and everybody in the military knows this, but you know, when someone, especially leadership comes to you, if you're sitting down, if you're sitting at your desk or whatever, you get up and you, you know, you stand and you, and you speak, you know, uh, some, some instances you might stand and pray to rest, um, you know, if they come up to your desk or whatever, and you'll, and you know, you speak or whatever. And, you know, I was doing that, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, boss walks over, um, ask me for something or ask me or ask me how I'm doing. I'll instantly, you know, move my chair back, stand up, talk to him. And, and he'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like, you know, uh, you, you're, I know you're still adjusting or whatever, but you don't, you don't have to do that. And I was just like, oh, uh, yeah. You know, it was just second nature. It just happened like that. And I was like, yeah, I, I guess I don't, yeah, okay. But to me, maybe it, it also, for me, it seems like a sign of respect. It seems like something that you should just do anyways. But for, but you know, in that instance, in that in that circumstance, it, um, I guess it was. Um, I can tell that certain things was making people uncomfortable and making him uncomfortable. Um, that what I was doing, and so at least that's what it felt like from my from my perspective, you know. And so, and I think that was one of those things. Um, you know, there's little bits and pieces of I did, what I didn't realize was kind of. Um, planted from the military that I was kind of still doing while I was on the internship, the skill bridge program. Um, another one is the work ethic, lifestyle, um, what's, what can be perceived as a lot to somebody else and what is not. Um, and it's all subjective, I guess. Um, but in the military, you definitely get overloaded with a lot. Although, you know, I was never, you know, I, I did, you know, security force, uh, security forces, um, augmentee duty for like five months, four months. Um, and I got to experience a little bit of what they got to, what they had to do. And it's a lot of work, right? 12 hours and Panama, shit, all those things, right? Um, which some people like, um, but the military get overloaded with a lot right it's you work all day and then perhaps you have some sort of training that's maybe after work or um, you're pretty much on the job 24 7 even if you're off you can get called at any moment and it's kind of just go 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 right and even when you're working you get overloaded with you know a bunch of tasks bunch of work and it can be a lot it can be overwhelming that's why a lot of people in the military get anxiety and, and deal with depression and you know I can go on and on about that but you deal with a lot and what I kind of feel like in the civilian world what I've kind of what kind of um, experience is that what might be a lot for them perhaps is not a lot for you and so you have to find this because you got to be careful right tread lightly because um, you haven't been doing what they're doing but then you see what they're kind of doing and you think, man, I can do that and I have time to do this. And you have this like kind of a structure. And so that's kind of a benefit, but it's also something that you kind of notice, right? Trans transitioning out of the military into the civilian world. And so it's, it, I've been having this issue, these issues, I guess, I don't know if you want to even call them the issues, but these kind of array of, of transitionary um sorry for all the cars passing by but these transitionary things right going from this side of the world to this side of the world right you know what i mean like going from military to this it's been it's been a process and it's still a process you know i'm i'm only you know um technically uh six months from what i was doing on a day-to-day -day basis in the military right working finance and, um, you know, even though I'm still technically military, I haven't really been doing military stuff for the last, you know, six months pretty much. And so it's been a big change. And I know a lot of you who are, you know, going through the process of transitioning or you have, you know, maybe you've transitioned already, you're retired or maybe you're separated. You've dealt with some of those problems. Um, but I'm curious to hear what your, you know, what have you dealt with, right? I know a lot of people who have been deployed a lot you know, they, you know, my problems don't seem that, probably don't seem that big of a deal for a lot of the military uh, members who have been in like, you know, dire situations where they're actually transitioning from like things and they have issues um, that uh, rose from their 
um, experiences, but and I'm and I'm aware of that. And so, but I do know it's a process for all military members, whatever job you did, whatever job you you worked in, um, getting out of the military and and trying to acclimate yourself into this the civilian world. And so, I'm very curious what you know struggles or challenges that you've cha that you have faced and. I'm very, um, I'm looking forward to hearing about that and perhaps I'll cover that in a future video and maybe I have a plan next week on um, connecting with a few other veterans, a few other military members on their transition, uh, transitionary process and what it's been like for them um, and then what benefits and things that they use to kind of um, help support them as they're transitioning out to. And, um, I'm looking forward to doing more videos in the future on similar topics and um, I think next week I have planned to do the um, I'm using the GI Bill so I'm gonna do a GI Bill video um, and also um, more skill bridge um, topics I'm gonna be doing videos on that um, as well um, this week or next and then as well as um, some finance topics because obviously I was finance and I think there's a lot of information that military members transitioning could use, um, you know, finance-wise, um, to help better prepare themselves for what's to come, right? The inevitable. Once you, um, you know, either don't re-enlist or if you are retiring, um, there's a lot to prepare for and things that you probably should know or things that would definitely help you out. So, um, if you have, if you guys have any other ideas, just let me know and I'll get to it. All right. Uh, as always, I appreciate you guys and peace.